What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be learning a little bit about accessibility in your iOS apps with SwiftUI. So here we are on the website, on Apple's own website, talking about accessibility on iOS. And the first thing that I'll just call out here is a lot of times folks think that this isn't really an important topic, but clearly Apple has a full page dedicated to this, and it's not just a generic doc page. So you can you can tell out the gate that it's really critical and important and honestly it helps your apps grow a lot faster so we'll take a look at some basics of accessibility in swift ui today an important topic um that's you know i think under under talked about so uh let's go ahead and start by smashing that like button down below helps out quite a bit subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's get into our example of accessibility with swift ui all right, we're going to begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. I'm going to stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and give this project a name of Swift UI Accessibility. Make sure your language is set to Swift and both your lifecycle and interface are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, as soon as Xcode decides to load, we're going to close this right panel. I'm going to expand my window here. Let me also pick a different preview device. Maybe we'll go with a 12 Pro Max. And we can hit resume on our canvas over here to load up our preview. So accessibility is something that Apple encourages quite a bit, like I mentioned. And in SwiftUI, it's pretty easy to make elements accessible. So buttons and labels, uh, these text elements, are accessible out of the box. But let's take a look at adding some custom accessibility. So let me first and foremost create a navigation view here. We're going to nest a vertical stack inside of there. Let's go ahead and lowercase that T. Let me also go ahead and add a navigation title modifier here. We'll go ahead and call it uh, Swift UI uh, Accessibility. And let's go ahead and put maybe an H stack inside of here. So we've got this hello world. Let me put this inside of a horizontal stack maybe. And let's go ahead and have a couple different uh, labels in here. So we'll have one, two, three, four maybe. So these labels are accessible out of the box. But what if we wanted the user um, who's tapping with perhaps voiceover on to know that this horizontal stack contains numbers. Well, we can use a number of accessibility related uh, identifiers here and we're going to use them right now actually. So the first thing that we're going to want here is accessibility uh, element. So we're going to notify or rather let the SwiftUI framework know that this horizontal stack is accessible. Now we're going to also set a accessibility uh, label and this is going to be a text basically that will be read aloud by voiceover. So we can go ahead and say this is a numbers row perhaps and maybe the user can select a particular number. So uh, sticking with our hypothetical example here, we can also go ahead and, uh, and set a accessibility value. Now we can say the value is also going to be a text. So I can go ahead and uh, go ahead and pass in any string into here. So maybe we can say current value is one, or you could even just say one in here like this. So looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting. So we can't really see accessibility on the right hand side, but when you run this on a device, you can certainly test it out. But sticking with our example where the user can go ahead and maybe change the number, let's go ahead and create a state property up here, which is going to have a, I don't know, maybe selected number. It's going to be an integer by default. Let's go ahead and say it is one. Uh, that is going to be the default value. Now, when you're using accessibility or when a user is using it, they can swipe or double tap. And there's a variety of gestures that they can go ahead and uh, perform on the device. And we can handle them in a variety of ways. So we're going to look at one today, which is a accessibility adjustable action. And it actually takes in this closure here. 
and it has one property called a direction or one inbound parameter I should say and what we can do is we can actually switch on this direction now we'll see if my error will let me autocomplete looks like it will awesome there are two cases in here that we particularly care about one is increment and one is decrement so you can probably imagine what we're already going to be doing and that is going to be uh, incrementing our state property so right now we have this current number here but this increment and decrement would be swipe gestures uh, for the user using voiceover so we can go ahead and say self dot selected number plus equals one that'll go ahead and uh, increment it and we can also say minus equals one now we don't want this to be uh, less than zero so we could also say here uh, guard that this is greater than one otherwise we don't want to decrement here and instead of hard coding the accessibility value here to be one we can go ahead and convert our current uh, our actual current number into a string so I can actually just grab this right here and toss it into there like that and now the accessibility value that is read out loud when someone using voiceover taps on this horizontal stack will reflect our current number so this is basically all I really wanted to cover it's a little tough to show this stuff in action on a simulator or preview since you can't really you know use accessibility on this but if you run it on your device uh, you'll notice that it does in fact behave as expected and I've said this already but I'll stress it again that uh, supporting a good degree of accessibility will really, really help your app's downloads. It's one of those things that for a lot of developers is an afterthought, uh, but we can see it firsthand from Apple's own first-party apps and a lot of the other larger apps out there, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, accessibility is uh, something that should stay top of mind, not only from an accessible perspective for a variety of users out there, but also from a developer perspective who wants to get more users and you know eyeballs on your apps. So. That's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't smashed that like button down below, don't forget to do so. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you're new and haven't done so already and you're into iOS and Swift and want to stick around. Let me know in the comments, do you prioritize accessibility? Do you think it's not really worth it? Do you add it as maybe like an update? What do you guys think? So thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.